This is John Young with the Disc Jockey News. Today we're going to be talking about batteries because that's something that we've been hearing a lot in the news. Jim from Colorado Sound and Light is with me. Jim, people have been hearing about these lithium ion batteries exploding, burning, with hoverboards are being banned across the country. And I think there's, there's some information that DJs need to know because those batteries are showing up in all sorts of places these days. And we got to give them some tips and ideas of how to make it safe or how to use these things. That's very correct. Matter of fact, I, here at the show at uh, Mobile Beat, a gentleman had a hoverboard scooter thing. He was going to, at the airport, they seized it. Oh, no. He was going to take it back to Mexico with him, but they seized it. It's still at the airport. <laughs> oh, no. So this is a very concern uh, that people need to look at. Yeah, yeah. And we're talking about lithium ion batteries and we've got some right behind us. We'll pull one up. For those of you who who uh, haven't seen these, most of you probably have. You know, they're a little bit bigger than our, our AA, kind of a, almost a, the diameter of a C battery. Not quite, but the length is a little bit longer. Now, what size battery was this? That's called an 18650. Okay, and these are commonly used in my application for a uh, flashlight. Jim, is that behind you there? You want to grab that? Uh, that's correct. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Small ones and big ones, of course. Yeah, this is, this is one of our flashlights we use when it's really dark, and right now we're just luckily using some daylight coming in <laughs> roll outside. But they are commonly found in these little uh, LED flashlights, very, very popular. Now, the problem isn't so much that, you know, with the flashlights so much, it's, it's what people are doing when they're charging them and how these batteries are being discharged. So let's kind of talk a little bit more about why that's happening. Uh, that's true. The, the myth is sometimes that people think you should take the battery and run it down all the way to recharge it. Not on a lithium. And in almost every battery instance, to run a battery totally dead and think that you're just going to get more out of it by recharge, that's a, that's a, a myth that's not good. And okay. that could be even a car battery, the lithiums especially. You know, any battery, do not run it so it's down so low that you, it's heating it up so much in the charge mode that you could have potential problems with it. Mm -hmm. A battery is normally the battery that we looked at, okay? Those are 4.2 to 3.7 volts. Uh, in a lighting environment where these are used in your battery up lights or in other even bubble machines I see, yeah. they're hooked in series parallel combinations where they get 12.6. Okay. So they're actually using three in series and a combination of that with a PC board to monitor the short circuit and the current capabilities to get that voltage. At 12.6, when that thing hits 10 volts, that's a dead battery. Mm. And to take and suck that lower, you're actually doing harm to the battery. Okay. And then when you go to charge that, the charger's got to look at whoa look at this and it's going to try and charge it as much as it can right and it will bring it back to life in most but there's a heat factor that's involved when we're dealing with energy and that's the thing that we have to be careful of with these type of batteries the first instance will be heat and you you you'll notice it mm -hmm. the next instance is that you have smoke from the battery and even on car batteries there's a vent yeah, on, on your car batteries. Even my daughter's BMW, I change it in, in the trunk. There's actually a tube that hooks to the battery. These even have a vent. Well, that's where your smoke is coming from, okay? Hmm. And it's in the positive tip underneath there. Okay. But the next series, we have the heat, we have smoke, and then we have fire. And it's totally possible. And that's why the airlines and various things have banned those, you know, batteries on their systems because there they have so many batteries in there the current potential is humongous mm -hmm. and with more power of, of current that becomes the danger point. Hmm. Interesting. Now you were talking about with our, our LED uplights and such that there was a, a control board or something to that there, effect? There is a PC board in there uh, inside the battery. You can't see it but it's inside and there's it's all microchips in there that actually control the short circuit protection. So if I were to take the positive and negative and short them together it would just turn the battery off. The, okay. the electronics would turn it off. Otherwise we would have a massive spark and problems. And that's, that's the board inside there. That board also monitors the series charging inside the battery and I have seen because we work on things yeah. uh, where part of that board will go bad and you'll have three of the 12 cells that aren't charging properly mm -hmm. because it's 
you know, with anything, anything can go wrong. Yeah, eventually. Anything can fail. Yeah. And so that's controlled by a board that's in a light now. But in this case, this one is for a flashlight. And that ability to control the short circuit is built in? It's built in this battery. Even though it's the same packaging, it's a different prefix on it. And it has actually microelectronics in the positive tip that monitor short circuit and charging. So then I wouldn't be able to, say, swap out batteries on that uplight and replace it with these. That's right. And on the battery uplight, those batteries are actually have straps and it's welded together, the nice. series and the parallel so in there. We don't do stupid things. <laughs> Now my but concern, anything's though, possible. Yeah, DJs are, <laughs> are resilient about doing dumb things. So then, is, if now in my case, again, this came from the flashlight you guys saw in just a few minutes ago. It's possible because DJs sometimes will go and order things where they shouldn't be ordering things from places that they don't know that much about. It's possible if they got that kind of a battery and tried to use it in a flashlight that there could be some major problems. That's true because there'd be no monitoring of it. And if they did short circuit it while they're handling it mm -hmm. or anything like that, you could have a major uh, problem on your hands. Wow. Wow, that's that's really interesting. The thing about lithiums, I mean, they're used in the Tesla car. It's it's battery source that because of we all want portable things. Yeah. Uh, our phones. Matter of fact, uh, my partner here just got an extended battery that goes on his phone. Yeah. That little extended thing has over four amps of power. Mm. Plus, you figure that and the power inside his phone. He's got quite a bit of power there yeah and that's why the lithium and it is a source that's designed to be charged and and run down and then recharge where most batteries don't like to be brought down they like to be held at their full voltage potential mm -hmm. say an example the lead acid in your car as soon as you start that car it's immediately bringing it back up but it doesn't run it down to that 10 volt level because it knows at that point you could be damaging cells inside the the unit yeah interesting now let's talk about charging these things now you know, I, I get with my, my flashlights, I've got a little individual charger. Right. And I've got, one is an individual, one's a two. I plug them in, it goes red, it's red, red, and it eventually becomes green. Right. How should I be handling these batteries and handling them safely so I'm not going to burn down my house? Well, I, I would say, regardless of anything, don't leave them unattended. Just don't stick them in the charger. Uh, go to the store, go to sleep, whatever. You, you just never know when a piece of electronics could malfunction. Mm -hmm. uh, so to be safe, never leave them unattended and you can look on certain chargers in the very small print it'll say that it's just not me saying that yeah uh, very important you know consider also when we charge these in the first how long would you say you leave them on the charger? Well, in my case, once it goes to green, I pull them off the wall. But, right. you know, I'm sure some people... Four or five hours sometimes? Yeah, they, right. when I run, run them a lot, like right. these shows. Can All right, keep in mind with lithium, the first hour, two hours, 90-some percent of the charge is done. Hmm. The remaining is just trying to get that little bit more. It's almost like when you fill your car up with gas, you stick it in, it goes off, and you're just continually pumping. Yep. You're getting just a small amount more into it and maybe spilling it on the ground. <laughs> well, the same thing could be happening with lithium batteries. If we consider, oh man, I gotta get a full charge out of this thing. Yeah. It's, it's, you can actually leave your window open of opportunity for more things to happen if, say, the charger doesn't decrease in current as it's charging. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens when it charges, you get the full current, that first potential. Then the current level goes way down on those remaining hours. Okay. So it's almost very little trickle of power trying to top that off. Hmm. So it's like the gas thing, you just barely yep, just inching it, you know, uh, to get that little bit. So keep in mind that, you know, you don't have to leave them on there for days on end, you know, and definitely don't unplug them, like you say, after they're done. Don't yeah. Just don't leave them there. Just thinking, you know, it's, it's turned off. It's yeah. just more electronics that could fail at some potential point. And, and that whole, that concept goes not only for, in my case, a flashlight, but I mean, these are uplights. When we have got those batteries and, and we plug them in, right. they shouldn't be any, Anything that uses a, a lithium source, because it's such a high current potential that it has. Also, storage of the battery, uh, 40 to 80 degrees. You don't want it in the sun. So, example, that flashlight, you wouldn't want to leave on the dash of your car. Okay. You know, something we maybe not think of. Yeah, for you know, sure. uh, it's a, it's a potential that we need to uh, consider uh, when we have these. And when we're dealing with uplights, uh, some people have like 20, 
30 up lights yeah. at, at a potential and they have them all in one area you know don't have them like in a garage next to a car that has gasoline mm. okay we have to think about what, yeah. what we're doing we need to be professionals about it and also when we're doing this keep a fire extinguisher close by yeah because we got so much power there if you calculate each light would have eight to nine amps of power mm -hmm. we have 20 batteries there that's 180 amps of power that's perhaps more power than what you have coming into your house and if you think you got a big transformer out on the pole sitting right there mm -hmm. that's basically what potential you have current wise so we need to exercise and, and remember that we're dealing with that yeah it's even though it's hidden we don't notice it you know it's there mm -hmm. uh, yeah yeah, that, that's definitely, definitely has been neat stuff. I want, to, I want to talk now about the idea when we're charging our up lights. You know, a lot of it, we've got the, the cases that some have, cases that have the charges built in. Some are, are taking all the little wall warts and sticking them on outlet strips. Mm -hmm. Is there kind of a rule of thumb that you use with, uh, with your, your, when you're doing your charging and such with your lighting of how many can go on a outlet strip or how many can go on a circuit in the house? Uh, and that's another thing to address. Uh, normally, what we found is 12 lights uh, or 12 chargers on a particular circuit. Now, this circuit needs to be something that's not on a wall switch. The switch could be where it doesn't make good contact yeah. and there's noise that we don't realize it's happening on the AC line because of the switch, a switch that's maybe a dimmer. We need to have a, a switch that's directly to a circuit breaker, so the minimal amount of things that could cause interruption mm -hmm. in power. Uh, and because even that one circuit, we're only plugging 12, there may be something else on that same circuit breaker. Yep, a refrigerator and in the office or something. Some, yeah. And when we're loading it down, that we're changing voltage. So now that makes the charger work harder. And everything that works harder produces heat. Mm -hmm. And heat is the number one object of, of failures. Yeah. So around 12 is kind of a nice rule of thumb. I found that. And you could consult your manufacturer and see what yeah. you know they feel is a, is a safe. But I, I found 12 to be a nice figure. It gives you a lot of lights. But you know, I've seen people that plug more than that. And that's not I a safe think, thing I think to think we've all said that. And I think we all cringe a little bit when we see those. You bet. Jim, this is some great information for those of us who use lithium ion and it's because it's going to be part of our lives. Are there any, is there anything else you just want people to remember when it comes to using lithium ion batteries? Uh, keep safety in mind at all times. Uh, you know, when you were charging them, don't be charging them on carpet, anything that could be flammable because uh, you do have a heat source there because of the charging. And uh, just don't leave them uh, unattended. You know, we need to consider them as uh, an, a, a current, you know, conductive. Yeah. Yeah, material. definitely. Good, good advice. If people want to find out more information about Colorado Sound and Light and all of the different things you do, because gang, if you haven't checked out some of Jim's, Jim is a very creative man. He makes some really cool things with, with you don't find anywhere else. So if people want to find out about your up lights and some of the different lighting systems you have, where can they go to check them out? Uh, you can go to our website, which is uh, csnl.com and uh, you'll see everything there or give us a call. Yeah, and to, to kind of go with that, give us a call. As we're getting ready to film, he has a customer calling and you're taking care of the customer. You bet. That's an important thing in this day and age. So gang, check it out. He can get you set up and answer questions and fix and yeah, just a really great. Jim, thank, thank you, you very much. This is some great information. Again, if you guys have, been, have any questions, get a hold of Jim from Colorado Sound of Light. We're at Mobile Beat Las Vegas 2016.